Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. Um, this, as you can tell from the title, the topic of this video is going to be about um, a sexual assault that happened to me back in March of this year. So, what happened was that um, this happened a week after I broke up with my boyfriend. And so that happened middle of March, and then the sexual assault event happened at the end of March, close to it. Um, I already, you know, kind of went over why I broke up with my boy, why I broke up with my boyfriend in the relationship series videos, but in short, I broke up with him because I was falling in love with him. He had a son, and I wasn't ready to be a step parent as I much as I thought I was. There was constant chaos at his household, and it just and it resulted in us snapping at each other as well, and a few other reasons, but those are the main reasons. So, and things with him, and then a week after this happened, um, the assault happened. So, a couple days, I think like a day or two before the, the night of the assault, um, I vented about, you know, the breakup and my feelings about it to a coworker of mine, who I also knew was gay. And, you know, he, and I, I told, I knew this, prior to this, I knew this guy about uh, a few months before. He works at the same place I worked, but not on the same shift and position, if that makes sense. Like, I'll see him, you know, some, I'll see him, like, two or three times per day when I'm working at, at, at the place I'm working at. And we'll, sometimes we'll stop and chat for, like, a minute or two, and then that'll be it. But, um, he's really nice. He's, he's humorous. You know, I really like the guy. Um, and before, in case anyone wants to, you know, try to assume stuff, no, I wasn't, you know, thinking about cheating on my boyfriend at the time with him or trying to get with him. That's not at all what this is heading towards you, if that's what you think. Because when I told this story to my, um, you know, boyfriend and, you know, who and then I told a couple others, I, those couple other people, um, you know, assumed that my main intention was to, you know, sleep with him or be with him, and no, that's not, the, the guy that sold to me, and no, and no, that's not at all what happened, so I'm just putting out there right now that that wasn't my intention. So, um, when I vented to this guy about my relationship and the breakup, you know, we seem to form a kind of a close connection over it because he he revealed to me that he was going through similar issues too with his relationship, and I had no idea he even was in a relationship at, at this time too. So I thought that was kind of you know, kind of a little bit interesting that we were going through something pretty similar. I don't, and he wasn't broken up with his boyfriend; he was just going through very similar issues, which come in which will kind of come into play later on. So, um, oh, before, sorry, before I keep going, a uh, trigger warning to anyone who has experienced such sexual assault or anything worse than that related to sexual assault. So, please, if you think you're going to be triggered by this, please, you know, quit watching. <laughs> because it just gets, it's going to end up, this is the starting point where it gets really, where things start getting like really dark and messed up. So, so yeah, we, so me and him, I'll call him, I'll call this guy uh, Ricardo. Let's call him Ricardo. <laughs> me and Ricardo bond a little bit over this day and end up texting, you know, having fun. He's making me laugh, likes to crack jokes every now and then. You know, he's been, he's doing a good job of cheering me up. We text all throughout the day, you know, Still talking about, you know, our relationships and other stuff. And later that same day, he asked me if I want to come over to talk more about it. And I told him, sure. You know, I, I could use, you know, a friend to talk to right now just because, you know, I was still pretty deep in my emotions. And I just, and he seemed fun to talk to. Like I said, he was, che he was cheering me up a little bit. So it seemed like a good idea at the time. So I said yes to that. I went over to his place, and when I got there, you know, we talked some more, I, he showed me around his apartment, 
Um, and then we sit down to talk about, you know, relationships, other stuff, what's going on in our personal lives. Um, he kind of pressures me to drink alcohol. And, you know, at the time, you know, me, I was all about, you know, drinking alcohol and, you know, thinking that it's fun when I get drunk. So, of course, I take it and I drink it on an empty stomach, nonetheless. Yeah, so, big first mistake right there. And also, first red flag right there was that he wanted me to, he kind of pushed me to drink alcohol. So, I did. I had a, so, I had a few beers before a certain something happened, a certain something happened. And what that certain something was, was that when we were talking, someone comes in his apartment and he ends up telling me that this person that's coming in is his current boyfriend. And I had no idea that he was living with his current boyfriend. He neglected to tell me that information. And so I'm just like, I thought that was kind of weird at first. Uh, but then I kind of like brushed it off and I was like, oh, okay, well, it's, it's not a big deal. He's probably just you know, just living here just because he can't afford to be by himself or whatever, but that was a second red flag, you know, that he didn't tell me that he loved his boyfriend and that, um, well, you'll see later on why he didn't mention that to me about his boyfriend living there. So the night progresses, his boyfriend, who will call... <laughs> Robbie, let's call, let's call him Robbie. Uh, he comes out and joins us and talks with us too. I get to know him, we get to know each other a little bit more. I drink a little bit more. Still on empty stomach. And I, at this point, I'm starting to mix drinks and I'm getting pretty drunk. And so is, and so is Ricardo. So, Ricardo, as we're in the living room and his boyfriend, fiance, or I don't know what fucking title he has, um is occasionally talks to me while he brought while he's browsing on his, on his phone the whole time on Facebook I think and then Ricardo starts getting like you know kind of touchy feely with me he starts you know kind of brushing up on my legs and kind of massaging them a little bit you know getting really close to my groin and also starts sniffing me too around my neck area and chest and I'm just like okay this is getting kind of awkward <laughs> It's like, I, and that's the point where I started getting uncomfortable because it's like, that's like, you know, at the time I didn't think of it, but looking back at that, that's like classic predatory moves right there is, you know, sniffing someone and, you know, rubbing someone's thighs close to the groin. And it's just, oh God, it's just so disgusting how I just, how he just did that. And so he does that a couple times around that time. I don't I don't remember what time it was that this happened. I know but I know it's like like I wanna say like probably around eight o'clock at this time. So um so yeah, he does stuff like that throughout the rest of the night. And, you know, he tells me that, you know, he makes it very clear that he he's interested interested in me romantically and I'm sexually, I suppose, and I don't really make much of a response, I just kept saying, oh, okay, cool, that's good to know, I guess, I didn't, like, really, um, what's the word, I didn't really reciprocate those feelings, I just kind of, like, you know, stay neutral about it, I guess, and, um, so basically, to, to, speed the, to speed this up, because, you know, it's just, there's, like, another hour that happened after this, before the actual assault happened, but that whole hour was just basically him, you know, being flirty with me, still sniffing me and touching me, my, you know, certain parts of my body, except for my groin. And so I drink a little bit more, and at this point I'm drunk, but not like, I'm not, I'm not wasted. And so is Ricardo. Ricardo was drunk, but he's not wasted. I think Robbie had a couple drinks as well, but I don't think he's anywhere near drunk. Anyways, um... Ricardo 
wants me to dance with him during a song that he's playing on the TV. I don't remember what song it was, but he wanted me to dance with him, so I did. But um, And his boyfriend, Robbie, is just sitting there on his phone, minding his own business, browsing Facebook, I assume. He, like, and Ricardo's just, like, pulling me around all over the room, dancing with him, and I, I try to laugh it off. But at this point, I'm just like, I'm just like, okay, okay, this is this is getting weird. What what's going on here? I don't understand. But um, you know, at that point, I was drunk, so I kind of just went with the flow and didn't really like think about you know where this could possibly be going. So okay, this is where shit gets dark. So he so after a little little after we stop dancing. He wants to show me something in his room. He he's like really eager to show me something. It's like it's like he says I'm like, "Oh, I really need to show you something. It, it's it's good, but you need to come into the bedroom to go see it." And I'm like, "Okay, what do you what the hell do you want me to show what the hell do you want to show me?" <laughs> and so I go into the bedroom. His boyfriend, Robbie, follows us in there. And when we get to the bedroom, I'm like, Okay, I don't, what do you, I don't know what you want to show me. I don't see anything in here. Ricardo starts groping me and kissing me in my neck and pressures me to take off my clothes. And I did. And, I mean, I didn't take off all my clothes. I just took off my shirt. And he, Ricardo pushes me onto the bed. Or Robbie. I don't, I don't remember who it was. No, I'm pretty sure it was Ricardo that pushed me onto the bed. So he pushes me onto the bed, starts groping me even more, and Robbie does the same thing. And at this point, I realized, oh my god, they're, we're gonna have a fucking threesome. That's, and so, like, at this point, obviously, I'm so uncomfortable because they're both groping me, they're both kissing up on my body. They were both ready to take my underwear off and shorts, and I was like, and I, I, I was like, okay, guys, I am so sorry about this, but you know, this wasn't what I was expecting to happen. I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression, but I, I didn't, I don't want to have sex. I'm sorry, but I, I, I don't want do to have a threesome or whatever. And then Robbie says, "Oh, oh, sorry, you feel that way, I guess." And he says it with kind of an attitude. I'm like, what? Okay, so we we all we all get dressed again, and as I'm walking, we're walk, walking back to the kitchen. He makes some snide comment about not me not wanting to have sex with them, and at the point I'm just like, okay, you know what? I'm I'm just I'm just gonna head out, and then Ricardo can tell that I was getting frustrated over, you know, his snipe, Robbie's snipe comment and over what happened in the bedroom. So I was, I kept, I kept rolling my eyes all the time and I was just frustrated. And I just, I started, I started to head out and Ricardo saw this and, and he kept like getting on my case for having attitude. And he, he was like, oh, Cameron, what, what's your deal? Why are you getting mad? Quit getting mad. Quit rolling your eyes. Why are you rolling eyes? You're doing it again. Why are you rolling your eyes for? What's your, what's, what's your problem? And I didn't say anything because... I mean, I did say something. I did, I did say, I, I just told him, you know, sorry, you know what, it's just, it's time for me to go. I gotta go. It's getting late. I gotta work in the morning, dude. I, I, I just gotta go. And I, the reason why I didn't say, like, the real reason why I was getting so frustrated and kept rolling my eyes and stuff is because, you know, I didn't like the little snide comment that his boyfriend made and I didn't like what happened, what was gonna happen in the bedroom. So, you know, I didn't want to say anything because I have a feeling I would have made his, um boyfriend like even more pissed off and have him go off on me so that's why I didn't say anything you know and really say the real reason so I just told him you know what just let me out of here let me go I, I gotta get going I'm tired I gotta get home so I leave I come back to my place I don't sleep at all well I do sleep but it's only for like an hour I think maybe two uh, the following day, um, I find out that Ricardo isn't at work at all. I, I even talked to a co-worker of his, and they said that, no, he called out. 
And I was just like, oh boy, what the hell happened? So, basically, so he texts, I text him, ask him, what, what happened last night, why, or what happened this today, why didn't you come in? And he responds saying, he pretty much, he gives me like a really long story, but I'll sum it up. He pretty much said that him and his boyfriend got into a fight that lasted all night long, and that's why he didn't come in. And I told him, oh, it was about me, wasn't it? You know, you guys wouldn't have fought if, it, if I didn't come. So, at this point, before I continue further, at this point, I, I didn't realize what happened to me was actually a sexual assault. I didn't realize I was actually taken advantage of until way later. So I'll get to that in a bit, but I'm just letting you guys know, like, at this point, I still think what happened that night was just, you know, misunderstanding, and that was it. I mean, it was, but it was a lot more than that. So, let me continue. So, the following day after this, I meet up with, I see Ricardo at work, and he tells me, you know, that... You know, he, what did he say? He said something about how, you know, he pretty much hinted that, you know, his boyfriend Robbie was abusive in some, on some level. And that's why, and that's part of the reason why they got into the fight that night. And he told me that, oh yeah, you know, the fight really didn't happen because, you know, I, I have not been happy with him for this amount of years and... You know, and I think he started to realize that last night, but it's just, yada, 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 it's just, you know, relationship problems. I don't, I don't even know what to think about, about it at that point. And it's just like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. And, and I, I kind of got like a bad vibe off of Robbie anyways. So I think I was like, okay, well, that makes sense that he would, that, that, that that's what's going on, you know? So... Um, so anyways, I tell my mom what happened a few weeks after this event. I tell her that, you know, about what happened and, you know, she kind of came down on me for going over there because I shouldn't have gone over there, you know, and she was right, but she also said that, you know, she's, she feels awful and feels so sorry that what happened to me. And, and I tell her this because, you know, it's just... What what happened that night was pretty. At that point, before I, before I realized it was sexual assault, I it, it, it bothered me because I don't like how it all went down. I don't like how there was like a big misunderstanding. You know, I wanted to try to fix it, but you know, I, I just told my mom just because you know I felt bad about it. So a week after I call her, I tell her you know the event is bothering me still. Because, you know, it feels like I was technically assaulted and taken advantage of, you know? And my mom pointed out to me, saying, Honey, you weren't technically assaulted. You were literally and actually sexually assaulted. And literally and actually taken advantage of. And so, when she says this, it's about a month after the actual assault happened. So when she says this to me, it hits me, and I got think to think to myself, holy shit, I was actually sexually assaulted. Oh my god. And also, not only that, but I was also, of course, taken advantage of, and lied to, actually. Well, I don't know if lied to, but, you know, because, like I said, he didn't mention that he was still living with his boyfriend, and I kind of figured out by myself later on that his attentions were to have a threesome with me, you know, I think what happened was he saw that I was, I had broken up with my boyfriend at the time, fresh breakup, he told his boyfriend, saying something like, hey, there's this younger guy, and I'll, I'll go more to about me being young in a second, he, hey, there's, there's this younger guy that just got out of a relationship, he just broke up, he's, he's been vulnerable, you know, I could probably get him to have a threesome with us. I could probably, or I could probably coerce him to have a threesome with us. And I think that's what happened. I think that's why he neglected to tell me that he was living with, with his boyfriend. And I think that's what his attentions were this whole time. That whole time. So, I'm... So, we're now in the early, early May. I'm in a total funk because, you know, I just... The trauma really hits me then. That I was sexually assaulted. 
and also taken advantage of by someone who I thought I could trust because I was so emotionally vulnerable and not in the right headspace that someone would do that to me. So, the story doesn't end there, folks, so, no, it doesn't. So, I, so, from early to end of May, I keep this to myself. I start avoiding Ricardo Be because, you know, I realize that I, w I was taken advantage of. I, I just, and so I slowly stopped talking to him. And I'm glad he didn't, like, go out of his way to talk to me anymore because, or at that point, because, you know, I just, I, did, I don't, like, I just didn't want to talk to him. You know, it felt so awkward seeing him there at my job. So, end of May comes. Sorry, there's, like, something in my eye. That's why I keep, like, <laughs> end of May comes. I tell my, then, my ex-boyfriend what happened because I just I feel guilty for what I did you know I feel like I, I mean I don't want to say I did it. like I'm, I didn't cheat on because obviously we were broken up at the time but it's like I just I don't know I just, for, for some reason I just feel guilty for what I did so I tell him what happens and he's shocked and of course naturally and he cries a little bit and he suggests that I take this to HR at my job place and I'm like well why? The event happened outside of work. I really doubt they're going to do anything. And my ex-boyfriend said that, um, oh, well, well, uh, yeah, but no, he just could still, could still be served somehow. And I'm, and he, and he also, I also gave him permission to tell his manager. He told his manager and his manager recommended that I make a, um, a report. Report. I don't remember the term for it, but it was a report about him to send to the manager, and so the manager could send it to HR about, you know, Ricardo, what happened to me. And because I guess his manager thinks that, you know, just like I said, justice could be served somehow, some way. And my ex boyfriend was like really like on me to make the report. Like he was really like forward and pressuring me a little bit out. A little bit to do it and I'm like I kept telling him no I, I do I don't want to do it nothing's gonna happen okay it happened outside of work they're gonna see it as consensual because I said yes to coming over to his place so I don't think it's gonna happen but he kept kind of demanding that I do it and so I was like okay you know what screw it I'll write the or the freaking report so um, I you know I typed the report out, and I had to, um, in order to get, you know, everything into the report and to make it, you know, as detailed as possible, like, I had to mentally transport myself back into the night that the assault happened just to get every single detail out about what happened. And as I'm typing, I'm on the verge of tears because I'm just... You know, what happened to me was just so horrible and disgusting. So, here I am, typing this out, nearly crying, feeling the pain in my chest, all because I had to mentally be back there at that night. So, I typed the report up, sent end time to his manager, and I let, I let, I sent his email as well so he can read it, and the manager sends the e the report to HR. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, uh, he reads it, he cries again, of course, you know, unable to believe that someone who seems so friendly and nice could do something so horrid to me. So, uh, a few days after this happens, um, I get a call from my manager saying that, you know, HR is going to look, HR is going to call him down, call Ricardo to the, the main office, whatever, to talk to him about what happened. And, and this happened at the beginning of my, I, I got this notice at the beginning of my work shift, so I'm like... So the whole time during my work shift, I'm freaking out inside, internally, because 
you know, I just, I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, like, how is he going to react to this? How is he going to react to, you know, being told from HR about the situation that happened? How is he going to react to that? Because I, I don't know if he was going to, like, you know, go off on me in person or in text or tell his boyfriend about it and have his boyfriend go off on me or track me down or whatever. Like, I was just freaking out the whole day. And so his sister, who I work with sometimes at the job site, um, comes up to me and tells me what happened, or, you know, she shows what happens, but she made a point to me to tell me that, you know, she thinks that her brother, which was my ex-boyfriend, overstepped his boundaries and pressured me to send in the job report. And I didn't think about it first, but then I thought, but then I really thought about it, her words, and then I was like, oh my god, she's right. I felt pressure to make the job report, even though I didn't want to. And so, that made me even more mad. So, my ex-boyfriend comes in and sees me towards the end of my work shift. And he acts really, pretty in insensitive about my about me being in the mood that day. Because I was really down, I was really depressed and, you know, a little, and kind of pissed off, you know, from doing the report. And... He keeps asking me, you know, I don't understand why you're so down for, Cameron, why are you so down? You know, it's making me feel down. And so him saying that, being insensitive, I went off on him. And it's just like, I don't understand how you, you can say that to someone who's going through what I'm going through, you know? So I made him run off and cry, and I'm just like, great. Anything to make me feel more like shit. But, um... Thankfully, not too long after that, we did make up, and he did apologize for making those insensitive comments, and I forgive him for it, and I was like, you know what, just, it's, it's okay, I know you didn't mean to come up as insensitive, but, you know, it, it did, unfortunately, but, you know, I forgave him, he did apologize, we worked through it, and then later on that day, I find out that, you know, HR did talk to him, they told him that, talk, discuss about what happened, and, big shock, no consequences are going to happen because it happened outside of work. It's like, you know, what the hell did I tell you? What did I tell you? <laughs> so, however, he did say that, or HR did tell him that he cannot talk to me. He has to not be anywhere near me unless he, ha unless you know, it's in passing. And he, has to, and he has to go somewhere or he has to go someplace that I'm going to or close to. And so, you know, there was that at least, but... It's like, you know, I, I, I knew nothing was going to happen because it would happen, happen outside of work and, like I said, it would have been seen as consensual because I said yes to going over to his place. So, so me and my ex-boyfriend worked things out. We didn't get back together, but, you know, we did manage to kind of repair that a little bit and be friends again. So, I get a little better from this because, you know... I, you know, it's like, it's like what both serves to do, you know, you know, the, the trauma doesn't affect me as much anymore at this point, or, and, well, also at this point, but also back in, you know, after the, after HR talked to him, so I'm like, I'm doing a little bit better, so, um, well, and then, but the story does have a little bit of a happy ending, so, that happened the end of May, so fast forward to middle of July, I went to Fort Bragg, because, probably because, you know, I needed a break from everything going on around me, from my job and the whole assault thing. I, I just needed to get the hell away. Plus, I also really want to go for a brag and also do a solo trip, which I've never done before until the Fort Bragg videos. So, for those who saw the Fort Bragg videos, you know, I was somewhat still recovering from the craziness that happened from end of March, well, more like middle of March to the end of May. Yeah, because that was part of the reason, because me going to Fort Bragg was, you know, that was part of the reason. I just wanted to escape from my chaos. <laughs> so when I get back from Fort Bragg, I find out that Ricardo isn't there anymore at the uh, job site. And I was, and I'm just like, okay, well, why is he not here anymore? But then I eventually found out later that month that he ended up getting fired because of his attendance, because he would call out, like, 
three or four times a month on average. And I kind of I kind of knew about him calling out often because I would hear about it pretty often. He he was he would call out frequently since March. And for whatever reason, it took HR until middle maybe yeah middle of July for them to fire him because. Actually, it's probably more than three or four times a month that he would call out. I would say like at least six times a month that he'd call out. So yeah, don't ask me why the hell it took HR that long to fire him, considering he called out that much. But hey, you know what? He got his karma. He got fired. You know, I'm doing a million times better than I ever was. So, you know, here I am now. And... It's just to, but to this day, it's just like you know. I just, I still cannot believe. It's stuff like that that you never ever think in a million years would happen to you. Until it actually does, and when it does happen, it's like. Depending on you know who you are, but I think more often than not, you're like. You don't really think about like, how horrible. The event is until like after it happens. Because when, during the event, when the event happens, you're like, you don't know how to react, you know? You don't, you can't really fully process it until after it happens, and that's what happened with me. It took me a little over a month to realize it was sexual assault and for the trauma to, like, fully hit me. And what I learned from that is, you know, don't be so, I was going to say, don't be so trusting, but, like, just look, be more aware of the signs that someone's, you know, taking advantage of your vulnerability. There were signs, red flags, that this guy was taking advantage of my vulnerability. Not just because I was 24 at the time, and get this, and I'll get this, this guy is 51, I think. Well, he was 51 last when he told me, but yeah, he's 51, so. And I think his boyfriend is like a, like a few years younger than him. So... Like I said earlier in the video, predatory behavior, classic predatory behavior from older, an older man. And not only that, but it just makes you think, he's probably done stuff like this to younger guys before because young, younger guys are more likely to be more naive and taken advantage of, which is what happened to me. I was 24, fresh out of a breakup, emotionally vulnerable, not in the right headspace. He saw that, he took advantage of it, and along with his boyfriend. So, I am, so, I am a lot more alert now. I'm a lot more aware, I'm a lot more cautious of just, honestly, just people in general these days. Just because that event really, you know, experiencing it in person, it really showed me how cruel and disgusting some people can really be. Like, I know, I know we read stories on the internet all the time about, you know, these people... You know, the, the crimes that certain people do and how horrible it is, but, like, and it's just, like, you know, you, you would think that, you know, you would be cautious already because you hear the stories, but sometimes we're not as cautious as we like to think we are because we think we're invincible. We think that, oh, that's, oh, well, it sucks that that happened, but that's not going to happen to me in real life until it actually does. And... It may have a small chance of happening, but that doesn't mean it's never going to happen. So. But, um, in a way, I can say the event made did make me a little bit stronger. More sure of myself and my gut feelings. And. Um, but, um, like I said, I'm, I'm okay now. I'm okay. I've. I I made it I made it through, I powered on through, and here I am now, showing my story to you all. So, hope you guys take something from this. Just I guess the main message of this um, video is just you know like I said just be very careful of certain people when you're especially when you're going through tough times and being vulnerable about it. It, it's horrible that I have to say this, but there are people who will take advantage of that vulnerability. So. Thank you guys so much for watching this. 
Um, <laughs> I, you know, I don't really have, I don't, I don't really have much more to say that. I feel, I feel like I pretty much said everything I needed to say on this video. So, yeah, like I said, thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Um, I do have, an, I have another video planned coming up. It will come up in the next week. I know what it's going to be about. So, so wait, so, so I'm trying to try, try to find my words here. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in exactly one week from now. All right. Thank you for listening. Have a good day. Bye-bye.